disclaimer, the sound quality of this production is at times of high quality and other times questionable. This is due to the caliber of the iPhone 7 microphone. All negative comments and complaints may result in charges being filed unless monetary payments are sent to the production team. You can send these payment settlements and digital donations to Diabetty on Venmo or at paypal at paypal.me slash diabetty. been a long time since I came around It's been a long time but I'm back in town And this time I'm gonna paint my face for you You've been upset cause I've been gone so long I'm gonna make it up to you that's why I wrote this song And this time this video's for you I said, sit back down where you belong In the corner of your room with your snacks and your bong Sit back down on the couch where you've been sitting And waiting a long time for me Hello, friends. Welcome to my channel. Now, I know what you're probably already thinking. Where have you been? Why have you not uploaded any videos recently? Why is your hat so Dirty. Well, to be honest, I've just been so, so busy, but tonight I am here, I am queer, and I am more ready than ever for you to follow me along on this updated Diabetti mug. My last makeup tutorial, I had so many people recreating it. I was amazed at how many people just have that artistic ability. And I am just so thankful for all the love and the support that I've been receiving over the past couple of months. Thank you all, and I hope that you had just as much fun with this tutorial as you did with the one in the past. So for me, drag is all about constantly learning little things about yourself. As a drag queen, you should be able to adapt and to change. You should be like a chameleon. My makeup is constantly adapting and changing. This tutorial in particular, this is the type of mug that if somebody told me, hey diet, you have 45 minutes to get into drag, this is what I would like throw onto my face. If you are ready, sit back, relax, eat a snack, or follow along with me, I am going to block my brows, add some poreless face primer and do a little beard coverage and I will be right back. One minute, 37 seconds later. Whoa! Okay, so I was never really a contact girl, but I have recently been using them because I feel like they just, they elevate the face just a little bit more than they would with it. I don't know what it is about my fingers and my eyeballs. I literally can never put my contacts in on the first try. I don't know, is it like a natural thing for a human to be able to like shove your finger in your eye? I just don't, I don't know. Alright, that didn't work. Uh, I have one in. And it's burning just a little bit, um, but that's okay. That's pretty normal, I think. Okay, one is in. Let's try to do the other one. Wish me luck. I feel like there's just like little grainy things on the inside of my contacts and it's like rubbing against my pupil. So while I'm waiting for my eyes to quit burning out of my skull. I'm gonna go ahead and just start on my eyebrows. For this mug, I'm going to go for a like 90s Gwen Stefani, you know, overplucked eyebrow. <laughs> just kind of like an arched shape. The hardest part for me is always trying to match this eyebrow to this side. And in my last tutorial, I literally, as I was like doing my makeup, was like, oh yeah, my brows look fierce, they look good. And then I played the footage back as I was editing it, and I was like, my eyebrows are so uneven. And that actually happens a lot to me. Like, I always think my eyebrows look really good, and then I take a photo, and then they're like... Pfft. Okay, those are pretty even. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it to clean it up a little bit with some white. Okie dokie. The next step is to go in with your base 
color foundation. Really make sure that you are covering that area that you color corrected because there's been multiple times where I go to take a photo and I realize that this part of my face still kind of looks red and it's because I didn't put enough foundation there. <laughs> to go back to the contact conversation that I was having, well, with myself earlier, I had a pair of contacts a really, really, really long time ago when I first started drag, but I didn't know proper contact, like, etiquette or like what to do with my contacts and of course they were cosmetic lenses so they didn't have a prescription or anything long story short i would just put my contacts in tap water i'd get like a little ziploc container and put tap water and then throw my contacts in there well somebody told me like i that somehow came up in conversation that you can get a brain eating bacteria through tap water and if you're putting contacts in your eye after it's been sitting in tap water for like a like a period of time you know you you possibly run the risk of getting a amoeba in your skull that will kill you it'll eat your brain i of course freaked out so i had to set up an appointment with my eye doctor to go get tests ran to make sure that i didn't have any sort of weird bacteria growing in my brain and of course i didn't but it was a very very scary experience for me just a heads up for people that don't wear contacts normally or don't like know the proper rules of wearing contacts don't put contacts in tap water so i'm doing the upper part of my cheekbones and then after I'm done with my cheekbones, I'm gonna go in and do my nose contour. My nose contour is, <laughs> I look terrifying. I look like a, like a gecko or like a lizard or something. One thing about my drag makeup that's not changed too much is the way that I draw my nose. It's literally just an upside down triangle. I look scary. Scary. <laughs> My foundation is done. So what I'm gonna do is just take um, probably a pink and a red and just mix them together. Put it kind of in a U shape. So it's gonna look like that, and then you're gonna take your beauty blender and blend it. It looks really scary right now, but I promise you, once we set the face, it's going to look better. Much like my last tutorial, I am going to go in with a black cream and draw a winged shape for my liner. And really, this part doesn't have to be clean at all. It can be pretty messy. No, I didn't end up using that. Maybe wash it out one more time. That was my partner. As many of you know, I dye and style a lot of my own wigs well. I never went out and bought like a big pot that i can put my wig and the writ dye to color the hair in so i've just been using regular like pots that we have here at our apartment and of course i've been washing them out with soap and stuff but i read online that you're not supposed to cook anything in the pots that you use the dye in because there are chemicals that can like seep into the coating of the pot and then basically be toxic so I didn't know that and we've been cooking from them for like literally a month now. <laughs> uh, we haven't died yet so I'm assuming that we're okay. It's a lot of black cream but that's okay because we're once we set our face and add black eyeshadow on top we're really gonna blend it out and just make it look like a big big over-the-top smoky eye. Smoky eye. Smoky eye. I don't know why I just said I like that. Smoky eye. And I'm going to do what I did on this side to this side as well. The final step that we're going to do before we set our face with powder is we're going to just draw the basic shape we want our lip to be. I'm going to just go in with the same cream black that I've been using around my eyes and I'm going to create my little lip shape with that. Now 
my lip shape has changed drastically. I used to actually just kind of follow the natural shape of my lip. I've taken a lot of inspiration from my drag sister Lux. I've realized that kind of altering the shape and the width of your lip really kind of makes your makeup a little bit more cartoony. It's just more visually interesting. And I'm gonna do what Crystal does and not start the edge of my lip all the way on the actual edge of my lip. I'm gonna go a little bit in. I'm going to take my powder and just powder my face really fast and then we're gonna get to the fun part. Okay, so my face is set. Now what I'm gonna do is just brush off the loose powder. Much like I did with the powder puff, I avoid the black areas until the very end. That way I'm not smudging any unset cream. Next is bronzer. I just have this Anastasia Beverly Hills neutrals palette i always think if i was out in the sun and if i was you know sitting out there for hours on end and i came back inside where would i notice the sun hit me the most get your white powder out just use a little bit not too much we're gonna set the sides of our nose that way when we go in with our eyeshadow if any falls out it will be caught and we won't have to worry about black eyeshadow being smudged and then I always do a little bit on my cheekbones just to highlight them, like so. Bing! Okay, I'm gonna take this Life's a Drag palette that was gifted to me. I'm going to grab the shade Shady. I'm just gonna start packing that on the lid and blending that black out to be more of a, kind of almost a gradient or like smoke. We kind of want it to be a little rock and roll. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then I blend inward. So, you know, I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you'll even want to get this close to my face because I don't even want to get this close to my face. Find that line and blend down. Okay, and as I'm doing this, I think I need to add just a little bit of color to make it a little bit more interesting and pop a little bit more. I'm just gonna take this purple and this blue and just kind of mix them together. The color will really kind of just make it a little bit more dimensional. Warning, my face is gonna get really close to the camera again, but it just makes a huge difference when you have that extra color blending out the black. Y'all, I was in college for six years and I learned virtually nothing. One thing that I will always remember and that will help me with my makeup skills is that my painting teacher taught me that whenever you are drawing or painting an object, you have an idea of what that object looks like and what color that object is, but depending on the environment that it is set in, that object reflects a color. So like, for example, and you're probably like, Daya, this makes absolutely no sense. And like, as I'm talking about it, I'm kind of confusing myself. What I think he meant was, if you have a banana, you're like, oh, a banana is yellow. But if you have a banana in a kitchen that's painted blue and you turn on the light, there will be hints of blue reflected onto that banana. Whenever you're painting that, you wanna add a little hint of blue in the banana to just bring it to life a little bit more. So I think that is why adding a little bit of color to even a smoky eye makes it almost adding more dimensionality. And I could just be talking out of my ass right now, but um, I just wanna pretend that I learned something in college, okay? <laughs> the next step I am going to do, go in with a very vibrant pink eyeshadow and add some blush really heavily to my like temple area. And the way that that pink blends into the purple is just, maybe I'm delusional, but like, that's sexy. So one of the hardest parts about this makeup is the little white corner on the insides of my eyes. The NYX or the NYX Epic Wear Waterproof White Eyeliner. I don't know if they've like updated their formula or what, but it doesn't crack anymore. 
how that makes the eye pop. It literally is like, of course, any good drag queen will add mascara. Ooh, that is just such a big pet peeve of mine when I'm looking up close at a drag queen and I can see like their lashes, but underneath is like their little brittle, tiny, crusty looking eyelashes. Grosses me out. A step that I do after I add my mascara, I take a safety pin, <laughs> I like split the little clumps out of my mascara. I don't like how clumpy it gets. I guess I get pretty risky with my eyeballs. I'm gonna add some glue to my lashes and while I wait for the glue to start drying, I'm gonna fill my lips in. Freaking camera keeps falling. I haven't decided what color of lip I want to do. I'm almost wanting to do a deep purple lip, I guess. I'm going to grab that black cream that I originally used earlier. I don't think I have a purple cream, so I'm just going to go in with a pink cream. And then I'm going to contour it with some eyeshadow. Lips are nothing without highlighter. And I don't have any um, water to spray my little highlighting brush with, so I guess I'm gonna use coffee! See how that just really reflects the light? And just to add a little extra oomph, I'm going to do the classic Gigi Good highlight on top of my lip. One of the last steps before I put on my lashes is I add my Diabetti Dot on the tip of my nose. Okay, so I am pretty much done with my mug. I am going to put on my lashes and my outfit and I will meet you right back here so you can see the final look. I always feel like I have makeup on my teeth. So with the hair, with the accessories, with the makeup, with the cute little blazer that I put safety pins all over, I'm giving a little Cindy Lauper, I'm giving a little bit Gaga. Overall, I am giving you authentic diabetes. You know, I'm feeling really sexy, I'm feeling a little punk. I feel like I could go tear some shit up and set shit on fire. You know I love being tagged in your recreation. Show me what your face looks like with my face on it. If you like this video, give it a good old thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And please, down in the comments below, tell me what you want to see on my channel. I'm always looking for new ideas. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. And if you haven't booked a cameo from me, I'm available on Cameo for only $10. I'm just saying, that's like such a good price for the cameos that I make. So you could either spend $10 at Starbucks for like a shitty coffee that you probably could have made at home. Or you could spend it on a personalized video from moi. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did making it. I had so much fun and I'm so excited to be creating more content for you all to enjoy. I will see you all very, very soon. Stay sweet, stay healthy, wear your fucking mask in public, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah! Bye guys. Hey, before you go, I just wanted to let you know I have two new merchandise designs available on my Threadless website. This includes a brand new face mask. Yes, a face mask to wear in public. One lucky person will win a free face mask. All you have to do to enter is tag two friends in the comment section of my new Instagram post and share the post to your Instagram story and tag me. A winner will be announced Monday at noon Central Standard Time. Good luck!